What is the best orbital in Helldivers 2? These are your red stratagems that are shot out of your ship, offering either support on the battlefield or offensive attacks that can change the tide of any fight. Let's take a look at how each of them works and then rank them from worst to best. The Orbital Smoke Strike is easily the worst orbital in Helldivers 2. For starters, there is only one way to use any of the smoke-based items in this game. You throw them down to stealth away from a battle or stealth your way into a more populated area. Then consider the fact that none of the smokes work that well as the enemy still comes after you and bots still shoot through it. Yes, it helps evac or maneuver more accurately at times, but highly ineffective at its best. And the Orbital Smoke Strike is pretty darn bad when compared to the other smokes as well. It covers a wide area around you, but a lot of times spreads out way too much. I personally think the Eagle Smoke is much better, and even that is often a wasted stratagem slot. Then you have all the environmental challenges on these planets that already take away all of your vision at times. Zero vision plus some more smoke is likely negative vision and who wants that f tier your orbital gatling barrage is basically if your ship started shooting bullets down onto a designated area you get a very fast cooldown and usually this attack is not that hard to get away from problem is it really isn't good enough once you have any other of the later game orbitals unlocked there's no reason to run the gatling barrage only being good at taking out fodder, it can very easily miss loads of targets. When it does hit, medium-sized enemies or lower drop quickly. And again, it's a low cooldown, so spamming this over and over behind you is bound to at least help clean stuff up. But it simply cannot compete with other stuff. I've never hit any of my teammates when throwing this, which is a major plus. And the barrage is not an instant attack only, instead of lingering there for several seconds. Overall, something you can use, but far less impressive than any other option we have. It seems designed to slow down bugs, as I don't see any particular benefit with this against bots. The automatons tend to spread out a lot more. D tier. The Orbital Gas Strike is a blast of green gas that covers everything in its radius. The gas deals damage to targets over time, and with only a 75 second cooldown, you will litter the planet with toxic clouds constantly. I found that against bots and bugs, it quickly took out targets it landed on and eventually corroded away other enemies, walking into the area or leaving it. And this makes it pretty conflicting. On the one hand, it can be very handy for softening up enemies and saving lots of ammo for your guns. Then at the same time, the DOT damage is far too weak. Landing right on a mess of basic enemies, it just barely kills them as it runs out. Also, it just so happens the lingering gas is one of the most deadly things in the game for a Helldiver. Go anywhere near it and you will stink yourself to death often before you realize it's stuck to you. I like it, fun to use, and the green color is more unique compared to other of the red explosions you get with most other stratagems. Sadly, me liking it doesn't make it any better. Almost no effect on larger targets, and while it definitely hurts chargers, it will never completely wipe them out. I would never hate for a fellow Helldiver to bring this on a mission, but I would also never get excited about it either. D tier. The Orbital 120 Barrage recently got a buff in the latest patch. Essentially, this orbital calls down a lot of very inaccurate explosions. For quite some time, it peppers the designated area with smaller explosions taking out a lot of units. The patch fixed a huge issue this had where it would spread out way too much and never hit anything but your team. Now, it will deal significant damage to a more concise location, meaning you could throw it in a nest to greatly thin out the riffraff or demolish bot bases in one fell swoop. However, the main issue this has is that it's one of the biggest team killers you're going to find. Even with a full squad on comms, it's very easy to think you're outside the radius and then find out the hard way you were wrong. Now, if you throw it behind you as you run away, it will be safer and often helps stop what's chasing you. And while the first couple of times you use this, you think, oh wow, I'm never using that again, I found that the more I took the 120, the more effective I could make it. Only against bots, though, as you use it to thin out bases. Bugs have way too open areas that this just doesn't feel very good for. Sadly, we do see the biggest flaw of this item in that it's far less powerful than the 380 Barrage. Both do the exact same thing almost, with the 380 sending down far larger explosions. So unless you want two of this kind of attack, you're never going to use the 120 and instead opt for its Big Brother version. C-Tier. 
Like I mentioned with the 120, the 380 activates a very long period of explosions raining down from your ship. This is meant to give you much more power that can wreck enemies by chance instead of a more accurate stratagem that always hits but doesn't drop more than a single target. And this will last for ages. You chuck it onto one robot base and sit outside for half a minute. Either it blows everything up or at least softens things for you to move in after. Like the 120, this is highly inaccurate at times and very easy to to die to by accident. And just a no-go for bugs. No matter how much I used this against them, it never really was better than running something else. However, for bots, you're constantly invading very large bases. Throw this a single time, and it has a high chance to completely clear out even the biggest bases for you, saving all that extra time grenading each factory, completing the objective, and escaping without losing any limbs. I genuinely started to like this after the patch, as it can put in much more work than any other stratagem. Definitely feels heavily reliant on RNG upon use because you just don't know what it will and will not hit. But making bases easier to invade is extremely powerful, and not to mention the higher you go in difficulties, the more enemies tend to clump up and spawn in large numbers. More hordes means more chances to get use out of this inaccurate monster. Not the best, but it can be great if used correctly. C tier. The orbital walking barrage is quite literally a walking barrage. Your ship is going to shoot down massive explosions in a line from where you threw it to plenty far away. It is in no way accurate, but can put in a lot of work. The walking barrage is very similar to the 380 and 120 in the sense that none of them are meant to take down specific targets. They create some openings and grant general damage to enemies. When you throw it, the explosion is going to go out in front of you, so you can use it without dropping teammates near as often. And the line in a robot's base can take out all kinds of targets for you. Again, this one and the previous two are pretty terrible for bugs. I just don't get hardly anything out of them compared to some other stuff. But for robots, you can take out factories with ease Deal with tanks, hit a tower by chance, it just has so many uses, and it can be used every other base almost. Several of these on a team might not be the best, but at least one is going to give you guys enough time to regroup while still engaging in the fight. B tier. The Orbital Airburst Strike is one of the cooler orbitals that we have. No, it's not a giant laser, but the satisfying sound of explosive shrapnel landing hits just right. Wherever you throw this gets a wide range burst of shrapnel that explodes. Then it happens again, and again. Three total bursts of high damage. Now, it isn't all that good on larger targets, but medium and lower get shredded quickly. I found it fine for robots, as you can waste a group out of a base and move in after, but Bugs is for sure where this shines. Another nice thing is the code for the stratagem is only three right arrows, which is a super quick input, giving you a near instant attack whenever needed. Very good cooldown and will always add a lot to your loadout. Only problem is, if you get the extended stratagem range, basically a modifier that forces orbitals to be less accurate, that makes it way too easy to hit either a teammate or yourself with this, as the range truly is ridiculous. If your team has the big guys covered, and someone already has an ego cluster bomb, then it may be a good idea to equip this right here. You will be able to reliably save your team from massive hordes far more often, and like I said before, it has one of the more satisfying sounds in the game. B tier. The Orbital EMS Strike is very easy to overlook, and that's mainly due to most people looking at the support and going, nah man, I'm going big boom attacks or nothing. Well, the EMS can be a lifesaver, and one of the most powerful stratagems if used correctly. With one of the fastest cooldowns, you get an accurate strike that lands creating an EMS field. This distorted electric area will completely freeze or technically stun any target who wanders inside, completely cutting off an entire area that no enemy can get to you from. Chargers are frozen in place, hulks can't get to you, and everything else lets you freely shoot at it. In turn, you can more accurately place other stratagems that would often miss because enemies are moving around. Especially hitting chargers with a 500kg becomes way easier. Sadly, it seems those big old walking stick legged bile titans are unaffected by this. I guess because, you know, they technically walk way above it, which they're often a different story altogether anyway. Regardless, you want the EMS because it saves your butt over and over throughout all your missions. Drop it behind you to get some extra space, throw it in front of you to disable a group you're about to engage. One person with this right here can greatly affect any battle and give your team much more leeway in combat. Once again, we do see this being much more effective against bots, since they're going to push more often and bots are going to shoot while they head towards the field. But in both cases, it can stop multiple deaths from occurring, which is very powerful. A tier. 
The orbital precision strike is your most basic orbital. It calls down one single blast so you can take out single targets quickly. Very quick cooldown and has some insane power. Direct hits on Bio Titans can often instantly drop them and it will destroy most robot based objects you will be attacking. Your only downside is that it is very, very accurate. Miss the throw by a few feet and it's just not gonna hit. But the absolute power that it brings to every single engagement is amazing. Extra call in time is very, very very rough on this item, but be more careful with your throws and you can make it work. It's actually crazy weird how simple this item really is. You use it from the beginning of the game and up until the end, it's highly effective. Often the 500 kg will take this item's place, but if you've already got a plane in your loadout, it could be an excellent addition instead. And heck, with the faster cooldown, you could use it to blow up nests and factories if you didn't bring other tools for that purpose. Just don't forget about this item. It lacks the flashy adrenaline boosting blast from other options, but can be highly effective in the right hands. A tier. The orbital laser is something I'm sure most of you have seen. You get this massive fiery laser that deletes multiple enemies while active. You're going to get three total uses per mission and it has a very large cooldown in between each use. Throw it out and whatever army is following you is going to be toast. Drop it in a robot base and anything there is definitely gone. Not only do you get one of the most flashy and cool abilities in the game, but it can save you so often when you're out of everything else and just don't have bullets left. Multiple lasers per team means you can take out every large encounter you come across, and it's a heckin' laser, man! Now this absolute powerhouse is so good, it is for sure one of the best orbitals. But it does have some major downsides we need to talk about. The item is one of very few in the game that only gets a total of three uses, as in it does not cool down or resupply after that's up. You're gonna get three total uses per mission. Afterwards, that stratagem slot is completely wasted space. Now, on top of that, every time you use this, it then needs to cool down for 300 seconds before another can be thrown. A single person is basically gonna get one laser per three engagements, which makes it much less reliable and then you have the fact that it chases enemies down fast if any smaller targets are near you it might just laser you down as well so in longer 40 minute long missions i don't usually take this option most of the time having one person with this just in case is always great but the longer you're going to be there the higher the chance is you're all going to lose a full stratagem slot however for those blitz missions that only last about 12 minutes four players each with a laser is four total bases gone and most bases have multiple factories for bots which means instantly winning those missions or you play the fast kill this number of enemy missions and the laser racks up over half the kills instantly the item is fantastic however on longer assignments you want at least two people running this so you can alternate between cooldowns or something that's not going to run out of uses an efficient team will love the orbital laser just don't rely on it too much because spamming it is going to get you in trouble s tier the Orbital Rail Cannon Strike is by far the best orbital in Helldivers 2, so much so that I don't go into any bug mission without it, and I often bring it to a lot of the bot missions as well. This item, once thrown, instantly locks onto the largest target in the area and railguns it with insane power. Everything but a Bile Titan is instantly dead, and even those green giants can be one-shotted with a lucky headshot. The 210 second cooldown means it can't be used on every big guy, but you're gonna save a lot of time and effort with this stratagem and your loadout. Chargers literally get dropped in seconds, and when you have five of them on you, this is a big help. It also avoids one of the more frustrating modifiers, that being extra call-in time. No matter what, it just locks on and shoots right after you throw it. I think it's the most satisfying sound when this gets a large kill, and for Bile Titans, it just saves the day. Takes out bot towers with ease, and is going to take down tanks you weren't ready for in seconds. Unfortunately, this does have one large downside, that being it sometimes locks on to weird things, man. If you've got a Bile Titan and a Broodmother together, it always locks on to the smaller Broodmother for some reason, which is a massive waste. I've gotten it to lock onto a flower before, which was totally cool, and even shot myself while aiming at nothing. I found this item extremely consistent and reliable in every single mission. Only about 5% of the time does it do this haha miss thing, making it still well worth taking all the time. But yeah, there is a chance it's gonna go gotcha, lol, and shoot the smallest enemy. Seriously though, I take this item on every single mission I go in, and the fast takedowns make things so much easier when you get surprised. S tier. 
And there you have every orbital ranked in Helldivers 2. The Rail Cannon and Laser are two of the most used I've seen with massive power and just overall fun. But a lot of these can be viable if you just build your loadout around them or use each more carefully. And not being a plane, they don't get blocked by anti-air, which is great for when those bots do that to you. At least one orbital is in my loadout at all times, and I know most of us love watching the laser go wee. Hopefully you enjoyed this and at least learned a bit more about how each orbital works. This is what I think about them after well over 200 hours in the game. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time.